You guys all remember netbooks, right? The underpowered, low-cost laptop alternatives? These things were really popular between the years of 2007 and 2011, right up until the technology for tablets and cell phones evolved to a point that pretty much made these things obsolete. But what can we do with these relics from a technological transitional period? Today I'm going to tinker around with these two old netbooks and see if I can find some use for them in today's modern age. I was able to pick up these two netbooks for dirt cheap at a pawn shop, and they're both running Intel Atom processors that pretty much seemed to be the staple for these netbooks back in their day. I was able to pick up this one for about $15, and as you can see, it's pretty worse for wear. But we're going to see what we could do to change that. This one looks a bit better cosmetically, but I was actually able to pick this one up for $7, because it didn't seem to want to work or even turn on. Lucky for me, the barrel jack had somehow dislodged itself from the motherboard, and I was able to easily solder it back on, and the thing fired right up. Neither of them came with an operating system installed, and I knew that whatever I was going to use needed to be non-resource heavy, so I pretty much had an idea that I was going to be installing Linux in some capacity on both of these machines. With that being said, I needed to gain access to both these netbooks hard drives. In order to gain access to most netbooks hard drive, you need to go through the keyboard, which is a bit unusual and can actually be a bit of a pain, but it's not particularly difficult and with a little bit of patience, I was able to get right to the hard drive. Once I had the hard drives, I used the combination of this SATA to USB cable as well as Etcher to write the operating systems directly to each netbooks hard drive. Once that was done, I just had to do something about the ugly one cosmetically. I just didn't feel right leaving it this way. So what I did was take some carbon fiber vinyl and the old heat gun, and I tried to cover up some of its imperfections. I ended up totally screwing it up, and as you can see, it's really uneven on the edges, but I figured what the hell anything was an improvement from the way it looked before. On this netbook, I decided to install Botocera, which is a Linux-based gaming operating system, very similar to what you would see on RetroPie running Emulation Station. Now, given that this is a machine that pretty much struggled to run Windows XP when it first came out, I wasn't expecting much in terms of performance, but it seemed to run all games from the 16-bit era of consoles really well, and every game I threw at it from this era was perfectly playable. Running something like N64 was pretty much hit or miss. While some titles like Mario 64 were somewhat playable, other games like Smash Bros, absolutely not. I feel like where this thing really shined though was when it was playing Neo Geo. Every Neo Geo title I threw at it, it ran perfect and at full frames. Even something slightly more demanding, like SVC Chaos, it didn't have a problem playing at all. Me being a huge Neo Geo fan, this definitely made it worth the $15 I paid for it. And just because, I decided to run PSP emulation, and this thing was not having it. With the other netbook, I decided to try to get some more practical use out of it. So I installed Lubuntu, an extremely low resource version of Linux that is perfect for outdated machines running weaker chipsets. With Lubuntu installed, it turned this thing into a fully working PC again. I was able to perform office tasks as well as browse the web with extremely fast speeds. Everything from typing a paper to watching videos on YouTube. This thing felt like a right out of the box, brand new computer. So there's two quick and easy ways to bring some life back into some old netbooks that you might have lying around or any that you might find for dirt cheap at a pawn shop like how I did with these two. These two netbooks time may have come and gone, but that doesn't mean we can't find some use for them and have a little bit of fun in the process. Until next time, this is Ness, signing out.